San Diego Comic Con was this past weekend, and with it being Marvel's first time there in the past two years, a lot was to be expected after a lot of projects that were simply mid being released all throughout that time. I was out at dinner when the panel was happening, just so happened to pick up my phone, and was greeted by something I thought would be posted by a disbussing film, but turned out to be a very real and possibly the biggest Marvel announcement to drop in the last five years. Not only did they announce that Avengers 5 would now be Avengers Doomsday after originally being Kang Dynasty, but Robert Downey Jr. would be the one playing Doctor Doom. And someone needs to check on Jonathan Majors by the way. This has got to be devastating to see and like I've said before, one of the most insane fumbles of all time. So TMZ did find him and this man very much seems to be broken inside. I get it. After years of fan cast and theorizing and the usual mania that comes with following the MCU, we finally have a Doom. And I know that I'm not the only one who has had a million thoughts after seeing the actual announcement, but before talking about RDJ, let's talk about Dr. Doom real quick. Victor Von Doom, the infamous ruler of Latveria and possibly the greatest comic villain of all time. As time has gone on and he's continued to exist, there's been so many nuances and aspects of his character that can make someone despise him and maybe even root for him all at the same time. He's a man of action that simply looks for the betterment of him and his people and will do whatever it takes to accomplish it while taking any path that he thinks will be the way. Doom is not only one of the smartest antagonists, meaning he has some of the best technology imaginable at his disposal, but he's also managed to learn how to be a sorcerer. Even though he's primarily a Fantastic Four villain, pretty much anyone has beef with him because he can be a demon. I touched on him a bit when I did a video on the Fantastic Four, but in terms of adaptations, the films haven't done him much justice. I still haven't watched the cancelled Fantastic Four film of the 90s, but I think I've heard people say that was a good portrayal. Julian McMahon from the 2000s duo of movies was alright to me, an atypical one-note corporate bad guy who gets powers and makes him even more evil, and we even got a nod to Latveria within those two movies. And then that's it. Okay, okay, I'm joking, I'm joking. 2015's Fantastic Four, no matter how bad of a movie it was, still had a Doctor Doom in it. I absolutely hate this movie. I think I made it as clear as possible in that video, and a major aspect of that hatred spawns from Mr. Victor Von Doom. Generally, this one was a big mess, but they managed to create a Doom with no real drive or really anything that could specifically characterize him as the beloved villain that he is today. So after the acquisition of Fox and the announcement of a Fantastic Four movie on its way to the MCU, fans were hoping for and really anticipating the definitive Doom adaptation for the big screen. An adaptation that's able to touch on the aspects of his character I mentioned and even manages to add on to the greatness that we've known about already. These films show that making a villain is something that's feasible, but making a villain who truly encapsulates Doctor Doom seems to be a bigger task than what the studios had thought. But there has to be a good adaptation out there somewhere, right? Thankfully, yeah, there have been a few. With a character who's so iconic, it only makes sense that he's showed up in a bunch of stuff outside of those pages in the comics. A few cartoons have had him pop up, including the 90s Spider-Man series where he showed up for the show's Secret Wars arc. He also showed up in another one of the most iconic cartoons of my childhood, Iron Man Armored Adventures. He shows up in two episodes and for the first one that he appears in, absolutely fries Tony Stark. This was one of the best episodes in the whole show. If you want to turn to a more unserious note, you've got Superhero Squad who adapted him to be an absolute joke, but somehow he still felt like Doom and could be a perceivable threat at times. I mean, even LEGO Marvel superheroes had a pretty solid Doctor Doom adaptation, and I love that game, as many others do. And of course, we've had a couple Fantastic Four cartoons that simply show Doom doing what Doom does best. But I think the king of these cartoon adaptations has to be his appearance in Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, a show that is highly regarded by many, once again, for good reason. This show was amazing, and it's a shame that it got replaced by this one right here for the sake of brand synergy. Anyway, he shows up during the show's second season while the scroll threat is on the rise, and while he isn't the main antagonist of that entire season, his presence is still felt. In season two, episode one, titled Doom's Private War, we see him looming behind the scenes and eventually he captures Wasp and the Invisible Woman. Following their capture, he ends up scanning the two of them in some kind of machine, but gets interrupted when the Avengers and other Fantastic Four members raid his castle in Latveria. I count maybe eight of them who end up coming to his castle ready to take him down 
down and he makes absolute light work of all of them and they don't even end up beating him we end up finding out that he captured those two because susan is actually a scroll meaning that he knew the avengers and fantastic four were compromised before they even got the chance of knowing anything was up themselves and then he has some more minor appearances later in the season he helps tony figure out how to find out who is a scroll or not using his own tech he also announces that fighting the scroll war is very much beneath him and he doesn't see himself getting involved for any good reason but this show is able to show his intelligence capability his unbelievable ego and the concept that doom is just not anyone you want to be involved with if he's going to end up being your enemy so now we can talk about the elephant in the room rdj as dr doom is one of the most left field moves i could have never imagined the mcu would actually go for when kang was announced as the next big bad for the upcoming saga i thought it was really interesting because he's not a household name and depending on what the MCU cooked up with him. He not only could have became one, but also skyrocketed in popularity. And with Jonathan Majors' approach, it looked like we were in for something good. But from a business perspective, the underwhelming product of Quantumania and his legal issues made the hype train fizzle out, especially after they fired him. But I didn't think that meant throwing Kang away altogether. Recasts were something we had been hearing about for a minute now, but now we know they're not existent. In the past, I did not think it was time for Doom yet, and truly, I still don't. I like the idea of Doom growing alongside the Fantastic Four while also not being completely tied to them. It feels like the more we know about Doom, the more compelling he can be. The reason why that Infinity War opening hit like a truck was because Thanos had been looming in the background the whole time, and this was finally us seeing him in action. And with how Phase 5 has still been pretty directionless and honestly lacking in projects that have to do with the multiverse, I am really struggling to see a clear path of where he comes from. So in terms of Doom's entrance into the MCU, that's pretty frustrating. On to Robert Downey Jr. specifically being casted for the role. Despite Latveria being a fictional place, Dr. Doom is Romani, a very real group of people, and his heritage is pretty important to him and his drive as a character. Imagine after all this time, we had never had a Black Panther in the MCU, and they actually ended up casting Ryan Gosling as him. You see what I mean? And I know there's going to be someone in the comments like, that's not the same, but I just feel like representation is a nice thing. Some people are completely opposed to it. I'm not getting into that whole convo. Anyway. That led me to believe that this is a Tony Stark variant where something went wrong in his life and he ended up becoming a Doom-esque figure in the universe that he comes from. But the Russo brothers introduced him as Victor Von Doom and so have all of the official posts and articles that discuss this announcement. So that does suck a little bit too, I can't lie. I felt like once a multiverse saga was announced, an RDJ return was inevitable, whether it was in a hero role again, or a villain like it actually turned out to be. But this feels kinda desperate to me. I personally felt like Deadpool and Wolverine was a guaranteed hit for them, after a bit of a dry spell, and it is visibly proving to be the case. This feels like the kind of announcement that would have to come out after the last 5 movies failed to break even with their budgets or something. But that isn't the case. I think the fallout of Kang and general criticism of the MCU since Phase 4 mixed with the strikes sent them into a complete panic mode. So, what better way to bring audiences in than bring back the biggest star everyone loves as a villain that people love even more. So there's that angle of me not really liking it. But then there's my more delusional angle where I feel like they could get something cooking. It took me reading the comics myself and some of the newer projects to make me realize watching these movies and shows becomes much easier when you stop looking for 100% pinpoint comic accuracy. It just makes your life easier. Robert Downey Jr. kicked off this universe all the way back in 2008 and with Secret Wars coming alongside what is seemingly a reboot that would help bring in the X-Men, it makes sense that they want to bring him back in to end things with a bang. And there's also the argument that you can't really have Secret Wars without Doom. Whether they lean more into Jonathan Hickman's run from 2015 or the battle world focused secret wars of the 80s. I'd also like to think that it wouldn't take any kind of project to bring him back and that the pitch they hit him with had to be something solid that he'd be willing to execute. And money. That bag he's getting is fat. He's been using the phrase, new mask, same task, and I think that task is bringing another compelling story like they had done with Infinity War and Endgame to round out the Infinity Saga. And speaking of those two movies, the Russo brothers coming back to direct the next two Avengers movies was met with a lot of outrage, but I felt like this was a good example of a safe move. They've had nothing but hits for the MCU, so if you're looking to take some more on, why not bring them back? Imagine being down 10 and not looking at your star player to start scoring late in the game when given the option. You'd look insane. And interestingly enough, it seems like RDJ was only willing to sign on if he were working with them, so that shows you his confidence in that duo. 
it is exciting to see Doctor Doom show up in the MCU after feeling like it could potentially never happen one day. And while it is a very interesting decision, I'm sure there's even more to it that we won't know about until we're in that theater sitting down for the premiere. The craziest twist ever could be RDJ Doom dying at the hands who will really turn out to be the Doom of the MCU moving forward in similar vibes to this right here. I don't like the vibe I get that they feel like the MCU can only succeed when Robert Downey Jr. is in the picture because that's not true. And in addition to that, Deadpool and Wolverine and this decision also kind of make me feel like they feel like they are forced to recycle actors when that's also not the case. Back to that kind of business mindset, they took a chance with Jonathan Majors, a pretty relatively unknown actor, when bringing him in to be Kang and seeing how that turned out, they probably want to minimize that risk window as much as possible. So there's a bit of it I can get, but there are millions of actors in the world who would love to take on something like this, especially ones who are actually Romani. People out there who love this character in this world probably much more than some of the people who act in these films, but you just have to give them the chance. The MCU these days is never not interesting with everything that's happened after Endgame, and with such a bold choice, you can only hope that they are as confident as possible in the story that they plan on crafting to finish this saga. Those adaptations outside of films and the comics themselves, no matter how and serious they could be at times, show that a faithful adaptation is possible. It just depends on the willingness of Marvel to deliver, and it would be fantastic if they managed to deliver something generational here. I always knew the day Doom was officially announced would be crazy, but this was something I never would have cooked up, I'm telling you. It may work, or it may prove that the MCU is actually cooked. We will see. Personally, the Fantastic Four movie is giving off the most immaculate vibes imaginable, so I'm happy, and I will be happy seeing that. Everything I'm hearing and seeing just sounds like a project that I'm the most excited to see right now. Let me know what you think about RDJ as Doom and how it affects the MCU because the convos surrounding this whole thing range from complete brain rot to genuine criticism slash support for it, so I'm interested to see what you think. Thank you for watching, take care of yourselves, and as always, have a good one. Your family, those your brothers, ayy When we split apart, this the love between our mothers, ayy No, we ain't together, but whatever I still fuck with you, used to get the numbers Selling flights to get them dirty